Our featured speaker tonight is Carol Lees, and she's going to be speaking about the state of the BA job market. So Carol Lees discovered the field of business analysis while working as a support engineer in the insurance injury industry. Uh, she found it to be a better fit for her and has honed it as her career since then. Uh, currently, she works as a product manager for a software as a service startup company. Uh, she also makes contributions to the BA community uh, through her blog and through her YouTube channel. Uh, Carol Lise was born in Jamaica, but she's traveled the world and currently lives in the Atlanta, Georgia area. And so without further ado, I would like to uh, present Carol Lease. And we're so happy to have you with us. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Olivia and team for setting this up. I'm very happy to be here. Happy to meet all of you guys. I hope that we have a great discussion today. We're gonna talk about a lot of things. So I'm just, I'm very excited to be here. I'm very pumped up. Good, good, good. So can you take control of the screen? I am having problems stopping my share. All right, I'm going to uh, share my screen. And let me know if you guys can hear me well. Um, sometimes I have audio issues, so I want to make sure that you guys can hear me. It's a little bit muffled, but maybe speak up a little. And yeah, maybe come closer to the... Does that sound better? Is that better? Yeah, that's better. <laughs> Almost. Okay, can you guys see my screen as well? Yes, it hasn't it. changed. It's the same presentation. I think okay. it's still showing Olivia's. It's still showing okay. mine. Okay, give me a no, second. It's now it's not. Okay, thank you. Okay. You should be seeing uh, the presentation that says the state of the business analyst job market. Is that what you guys are seeing? Uh, so right, right now we're just seeing everybody in the room. So share your screen again. I'm, I stopped sharing, so. There it is. There it is. Yay. Yeah, we can see you. <laughs> okay, guys. So I'm going to present about the business analyst job market. I'd rather you guys hold your questions to the end. We're going to have a section for questions. Um, and we're going to go through some things. I would have loved to do a poll at the beginning, but we may not be able to do that. So I'll ask you questions during the, the, the presentation. So without further ado, let's talk about this. All right. So the state of the business analyst job market, if you see me looking to the side because I have a separate monitor and so I'm trying to get the two aligned. So hopefully that's not too distracting. Okay, let's get started here. So before I do that, the objective of this session would be four things to identify the current business analyst job market trend to identify what BA skills are in the um, to do a BA skills audit. So I'm going to ask you some questions about your skills as a BA, right? And then to look at the BA career path. Those are the, three, the four things we're hoping to cover in this session. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. So Olivia gave a great introduction for me, so I don't have to say much else. But uh, I've worked in the business analyst space for over 10 years. Um, I contribute to, to the community through my channel, my articles, my uh, mentorship program that I've had. I ran a mentorship program last year that was very successful. And of course, most of people find me through my YouTube channel. So this is my YouTube. If you guys want some additional resources on business analysis, you can go there and watch some of the videos that I have. I also have free training um, on my website. And there's some resources as well, such as templates for your different um, business analysis documents, um, BA resumes. So there's a lot of things that you can get for free um, from my website as well. So go check that out when you guys get a chance. Okay, so we're gonna talk about the state of the job market. So throughout the rest of this presentation, what I'll be sharing with you will be the results of a research that I've been doing, um, and it's coming from LinkedIn data. So I'm showing you the world through the lens of LinkedIn. Now, obviously there are other places where you can get business analysis jobs, right? Such as ZipRecruiter or direct recruiters reaching out. But I found that LinkedIn is the one source that we could kind of rely on to give a good pulse as to what's going on in the business analysis world. So 
there, even though it's great for that, there are some caveats to this and the methodology does have some, some kinks in it. So I wanted to just make, you know, be very transparent about that. So the data is influenced by how companies choose to use the LinkedIn platform, right? So companies might be advertising jobs or they may just be reaching out to uh, individuals through direct messaging. So some of that influences the data that we've been able to collect, right? Um, the cost is also a prohibitive um, thing. So maybe it costs so much that they may not, they may have a job, but they haven't advertised it on LinkedIn because of the cost. Um, it does not include any jobs that were offered through direct messaging. So a lot of the time recruiters are hitting people up on their LinkedIn messaging and offering them jobs. That data is not being collected because we just don't have a good way to get that information. The results also will vary based on the job poster and also based on industry because they may not have filled out the different sections in the job properly for us to be able to uh, make the assessment. So sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So that can be a reason why the data might be understated sometimes. And the data I'm gonna share with you is really from the first quarter of 2021. So I don't think anyone has done this before that. So there's no comparison. It's just what we have from January to March of 2021, right? So I wanted to make that clear that this is coming from this data source. And this is gonna be helpful to inform us about what's happening in the job market when it comes to business analysis jobs. So I have actually written a book about this. Um, it's a report, which is here. You can get it in print as well as uh, there's a digital copy of this. It's available on Amazon and also um, from that link that's there, the bajobmarket.com. If you go to the link, I also give you a resource kit that includes templates and um, case studies and lots of resources to help you get started as a business analyst. So what I'm gonna discuss is gonna be coming from this book. It won't be everything in the book, right? I have to leave some back for you to get the book, but a majority of the information is coming from this book. So if you want more details, feel free to check this out. It's a very easy read, it's 45 pages long, very graphical, um, lots of data that's like easy to consume. So check out the book if you wanna get more information from what I'm gonna to share today, okay? So who's ready to go? First of all, before we start, could you put in the chat for me if you are actually in the job market? If you're in the job market looking for a job right now, put one. But if you are already comfortable with your job or you're not looking for a new job, but you still wanna know about the job market, you can put zero. So just to get a pulse as to how many people in the audience actually actively looking for a job. So go ahead and do that. Right. And Olivia, you can let me know if there's. Yeah, it, it looks like it's a um, pretty even split between the zeros and the ones. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. That's good information. That's great. All right. So we have a lot of people who are actually still looking uh, for a job. And even if you're not, you're still interested to know what the job market is about. So let's look at some trends in the business analyst job market. So I've looked at USA and Canada. Um, in the book, we actually have two other countries, India and Australia. So if you're in India or you're moving to Australia, you want to find out about the job market there. That's also covered in the book. But because the audience here, I think, is mainly for the U.S. and Canada, I thought we'd just narrow that down here. So the U.S. has had a lot of jobs over the last quarter. Like there's been a lot of jobs, a little over 15,000, which is great for our career. Canada is a little less, a little over 2,000. But it's not really comparing apples to, to apples, right? Because the Canadian industry is a little bit different and there's just a lot more commerce going on in the US than there is in Canada, I think. So it's not to say that there's just, um, it's not a fair comparison for the population and for uh, what Canada is doing. I think this is a great, great indicator as well. So the job market is very hot, right? You can get on the job market and there's a lot of people competing for the job, but there's also a lot of openings for jobs. So this is a great indication that our career is viable, that people see the value of business analysts and they're actually making applications or putting job posts out there for us to fill. Part of the thing with the research is that we talk about how much demand there is for business analyst jobs, but we're not even, we're not able to really, we didn't do a study as to the supply. So in other words, you can see the job posts, but there wasn't an analysis as to how many business analysts are there to fill those job posts. That would be a separate thing and it would require us to know that the people on LinkedIn are actually business analysts, which LinkedIn might not want to tell us because of you know, privacy and other things like that. But this is great to know the demand is there for business analysts. 
So if we were to look, hold on one second. Okay. If we were to look at a map, just to see where are these jobs? So for the US, the majority of the jobs are in the coastal areas, which is not very uncommon, right? So uh, California is eating up the lion's share of business analyst jobs, no surprise there, because a lot of the jobs are in Silicon Valley or in, you know, technology and in software. And we all know that California is very big on that. So they're eating up a lot of business analysts, a lot of jobs coming out for, for the US are coming from California. Second to that is Texas. So Texas is also very, very big on business analyst jobs. There's a lot of commerce in Texas as well. It's the biggest state, right? So they go big in everything. So uh, they're second in terms of the volume of job posts that were made during that period that was under study. Uh, New York is also a big employer of business analysts. So if you're looking for a job right now, because everybody's remote, it's not as crucial. Uh, I do have a section in my book also that talks about the trends for remote work with uh, business analysts. But it's great to see that there is this number of jobs in these areas. And it seems to be that wherever there is a concentrate, like there's a metrop metropolitan area, that's where the business and these jobs are tending to, to, to concentrate. Um, what came out to me that was a little bit surprising was North Carolina and Virginia, that they have a lot of business and these jobs as well. And Michigan, uh, Pennsylvania, Georgia, Florida, you know, these are places that um, do have a good representation of business analyst jobs. In the book, I actually give you the actual numbers. So if you want to get into that specific detail, you can get into that detail. Now, if you're in the US, you don't want to be a business analyst in South Dakota. It's just, there's nothing out there. <laughs> there's nothing out there for you, okay? So <laughs> you're going to be hard pressed to find a job. So too is Alaska, um, North Dakota, Montana, Wyoming, Hawaii, Vermont, Rhode Island, Idaho, Mississippi. West Virginia, New Mexico, Maine, Oklahoma. It starts to get a little bit more as you go up. Um, Nevada, yeah, a little bit, Louisiana, Alabama. But those are places where it's hard pressed to find a job. You can, but it's just not, it doesn't have that volume that you'd really want to have. So the ones I named before, um, New Jersey, Florida, Illinois, Virginia, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Ohio, Maryland, Michigan. Those are places that it's, much, it's just much better for you to get a job there if you're outside of these three top states for business analysts. Now, if you look at Canada, uh, the majority of the jobs are just in Ontario, Quebec, and British Columbia, right? So I don't think you guys are surprised by that, the Canadians in the room, you're not surprised about that because we know your country very well. So <clears throat> Ontario is taking up the majority of the jobs, then comes uh, Quebec. If you're in Northwest Territories, Yukon, Prince Edward Island, North Newfoundland and Labrador, um, it's just harder for you. Unless you get a remote job, um, <laughs> there's just, there's not a lot, there's not a lot of demand there. They're doing other things, but they're not doing business analysis, right? So that's just a lay of the land in terms of where are these jobs? Where do you find the jobs in these different countries, different countries? Now, in terms of the industry, what industries are hiring the most business analysts? Well, to no surprise, is the IT industry, right? So IT services is eating up or having the most business analyst jobs or employing the most business analysts. And from LinkedIn perspective, <clears throat> IT includes Plus, uh, computer software, so software companies, and also internet services, such as um, your AT&T and your Verizon and your internet services companies like that. So they bunch bunch them together under the information technology umbrella. So that's what you're seeing right here. Um, what came out as surprising to me was that healthcare was also a big employer of business analysts. I know in the, in the IIBA's global salary survey, it kind of aligns with this, but this is what I found from actually looking at the data as well. Uh, so the survey of actual business analysts end up being the same as the data from the job posters, right? So the difference between both of these reports is that one is looking at the business analysts and having them tell us, whereas mine is looking at the job, you know, the employers and looking at what they're asking for. So this is very great to see that, that alignment. Um, in the book, I actually talk about uh, the salaries in comparison to the industries. So there's a part that talks about how much are you paid based on the industry that you're working in and also based on your experience level. And it's interesting to find out that even though some of these other industries have less business analyst jobs, they actually pay 
a lot, right? They pay a lot. So I have an analysis about six figure jobs of business analysts and what industries are paying in the six figures. So that's good to find out as well. But I thought this was a great way to know if you're looking for a job, what industry should you be targeting? Um, obviously IT would be great, but you know, there's a lot of potential. You know, they, these other companies still do need business analysts. It's just that the demand for them has just been more in IT and financial and healthcare. All right. Is everybody enjoying this so far? This information useful? Do you find this information good? <laughs> yes. I, I do. You do? Great, wonderful. Yes. All right, thank you. All right, so yes. what are the types of BA jobs? So I put them in these three buckets, right? Strategic business analyst, functional or technical business analyst, and process business analyst. So the strategic business analyst is the, the person who is identifying the business needs and solutions within the context of the overall direction of the company. So these are normally at more um, executive level, right? So they're normally VP of, you know, business analyst VP level. Um, they're in the executive suite looking about the whole, you know, they're at a very high level, thinking about the entirety of the company and how this is gonna help the strategy of the company. So they're very strategic thinkers. They're not necessarily down in the tactical weeds, right? But they're still doing business analysis at that level. And then you have functional or technical business analysts, which is the majority of the other business analysts who work in IT. So they are the bridge, right, between the business and the technical teams, and they usually work in software systems, although they could work in other systems as well. But we've just found that when it comes to technical, they're really looking for IT-specific uh, business analysts. And then there's a process business analyst, right? So they analyze business processes and workflows with the objective of finding out how they can improve these processes or make them automated. So those are the three buckets that I've found that the job, um, the jobs are asking for within these three buckets. So let's look at an example. And this is real world stuff, guys. I'm taking this directly from LinkedIn. I'm not making any of this up. So this is an example of a strategic business analyst job post that came from LinkedIn. I want to just walk you through what they're asking for to see what, what a strategic business analyst does. So this is from ADP, which is, I think it's a company here in Atlanta. I'm not sure, but um, <clears throat> they're into the uh, recruitment business as well. They have an application tracking system and all that. So the strategic business analyst will be responsible for supporting all aspects of the strategy process with an emphasis on, the, on, this, on understanding the dynamics of the three Cs, customers, competitors, and company. And they go on to say it's a fact-based research capability, strong quantitative and analytical data modeling, strategic thinking, of course, collaboration skills, excellent presentation skills, communication skills, um, demonstrated ability to provide insight. So that's the kind of world that they want uh, their strategic business analysts to be in, right? Being able to look at data and make assessment of it and make decisions off of it, right? Um, and this is normally at a higher level as a business analyst. Now, I'm not going to go through all of this. It's a lot, right? But just to give it a flavor of what they're asking for. So, for example, predicting future trends based on the latest data relating to claims, pricing. I think this job is about pricing and actuary stuff. Um, reviewing, interpreting, and reconciling contractual financial component. Working collaboratively with brokers. Producing and presenting uh, forecasts. There's a bunch of stuff there that I would say it's a little bit outside the scope of just business analysts, but at that strategic level, they might want that in a person, right? So to get a strategic business analyst job, I found it typical that they want both a bachelor's degree and a master's degree and a number of years of experience directly related to whatever the field is that you're looking for. So this is completely in line with the other jobs that I found, and that's why I brought it here as an example. Um, and then they have this preferred qualification section, Tableau, Alteryx, and experience within the domain. I would say if you're looking for a job and wherever they put preferred, you can safely ignore it, <laughs> right? Because this is what they want. This is their wish list. They would love to get a person with have everything that they want just out the gate. But the fact that they put preferred or they may say an advantage or they may say it's a nice to have, those are things that the company does want it. They wish they could have that, but it shouldn't deter you from applying for the job, right? If you don't meet those preferred qualifications or those advantage qualifications that shouldn't stop you just keep going just apply anyway okay apply anyway don't let those things uh, distract you here's an example of a technical business analyst job right so this one says um i'm gonna read all of it but it says work with business systems analyst or product owner to get any enhancements or new functionality onto the appropriate backlog which is typical of what a technical business analyst would be doing 
um, document workflow and processes. So even though you're technical, it doesn't mean that you don't do any kind of process. You still have to do some amount of process if that's a part of the job description, right? Interface with clients, ensure each implementation and all documentation is delivered to the highest quality, et cetera, et cetera. So that's an example. And this is from Smart USA um, uh, company in Tennessee. Here's an example of a process business analyst. This one is from Red Hat. So provide analysis and develop business process diagrams and models to support process design, right? Bring expertise or identify subject matter experts in support of multifunctional efforts. Um, you know, use business process modeling notation, BPMN. How many people know BPMN, <laughs> right? At UML used to be the thing, but now we get BPMN as we've taken over. Yeah, we know. So, Oh, good. Very good. Very good. Right. So that's an example of a process business analyst. So if you're a new business analyst, you're going out there, you're looking for a job. Um, you might find the different levels of business analyst jobs, and you might be looking at a strategic business analyst and you get overwhelmed. You're like, I can't do this. I don't know this. But that's because you're looking at the wrong type of business analyst. Sometimes they put it in the title and sometimes they don't. Sometimes they just call it business analyst. And when you're looking at a job description, it's not what you're typically looking for. Right. So that could also become a a point of frustration, but I'm here to encourage you that you just need to find the job that really matches, you know, what you think you're able to do as a new person who doesn't yet have experience in business analysis. All right, so um, after looking at uh, over 150 business analyst job posts, there are some themes that came out of them, and I've mentioned a lot of them in this book, but there are some things about the way that the job um, the business analyst job posts are being written or being, you know, put on LinkedIn that I thought I'd call it out, right? So for example, there is no consistency in the BA job role. So various job postings are labeled business analysts, but the tasks are not aligned with what you expect a business analyst to do. So it seems that there's a lot of confusion in the market as to what is the function of a business analyst. So job posters, employers are just labeling something business analyst. Once you do an analysis of any kind and you're working for the business, it's a business analyst. They don't seem to have a good appreciation for the, the focus of the skill and of the, the career and what it's supposed to be doing. So they're labeling all kinds of jobs. I'm gonna show you some examples later on and they're labeling business analysts and it really does create a lot of confusion for job seekers, especially the new ones who are not sure what they should be looking for. There's also heavy use in the, the job descriptions of specific company jargons. So I've, I've read through a lot of these job descriptions and they'll mention things about, you know, different processes and use acronyms, but it's very specialized to that company, sometimes to the industry, but sometimes down to the company. And so you're reading all of these things and you're like, what are they talking about? <laughs> I can't do this. And it makes you be overwhelmed. But if you read two or three of these, you get you just be like, oh my God, I can't do any business on this job. But the real truth is sometimes they're not writing the jobs properly. It could have been written by a, te a very technical person and it probably didn't go through a proper HR process and it just ends up on LinkedIn and it's not written, in my opinion, it's not written enough, clearly enough for any person to see it and know that they should apply for this job. There's also some, there's a trend towards specialized tools. So BAs who have specialized tools what do I mean by this? I mean that you're finding that they're now, companies are so married now to a particular tool that they're willing to hire a person just for that tool. Like you see Salesforce business analyst, Workday business analyst, Oracle business analyst. So they are so invested in these tools that they're hiring in under, under a specialized way that the person they're hiring for business analysis has to have the skills in that particular tool. And so it's forcing you to kind of revamp your tool set and to figure out, okay, do I want to specialize or do I want to keep being a generic business analyst? Because that's kind of where the market is also trending. Um, there's also a problem with, I call it vague descriptions, where some of the job descriptions I've read, they have maybe two lines or three lines and you don't know what you're really applying for. Right? You're like, I'm going to apply because I like the company, but I really don't know what they're asking for. So they, there is this, shortcut sometimes just putting things out there that's not uh, very detailed uh although i've seen the opposite too where there's like two lot like two pages of bullet points of what you need to do and i'll talk about that in a minute so that's where i call spanning multiple roles so i've read so many job descriptions that 
I wonder, are you trying to hire a business analyst or a business analyst department? Because everybody, <laughs> when I look at the job description, they want you to be the BA, the trainer, the tech writer, the UX designer. Uh, you come around and you be the customer service person. And you look at the long list, the laundry list of tasks that you need to do, and there really isn't much focus. It's really trying to pull everything out of you so that you're doing so many different things, but you have to be careful of that because that will shift you away from your focus area and where you can really become a strong business analyst. So that's some of the things to look out for as well. The other thing I found as a trend that I could not get away from, right? I was like, I, the data come back to me every time I did it and I wanted to know, is this really true? And that is the dependence on SQL. SQL queries, writing SQL queries, you can't escape it. It's coming for you. It's coming for you, okay? So you gotta have to figure out if you wanna know it and start you know, working on it, building that skill. Because more and more, the job market is asking business analysts to do a lot of reporting. It seems that the, the impression that employers have of business analysts is that they're going to analyze data at some point, even if that's not the, only, the sole function that they do, but they're gonna have to pull this data and present it in some kind of way. So not to be a data analyst necessarily, but to have some skill in SQL, to, be, have, to have some ability to do some kind of, even troubleshooting or just even basic, right? So there, there's a lot of demand for SQL. So if you have SQL query writing skills, you really do have an advantage because it's popping up more and more. And I was I was blown away by that too. I was I was like, really, this is really what you guys want. So there's a there's a blending of business analysis and data analytics, right? And so even though we see it as two separate focus areas, two separate careers, the employers are not necessarily honoring that, right? They're seeing you as an analyst and they include data in there too. And so I'm gonna show you some examples of where they're blending it up and the two streams of, um, the career streams are, are merging in some, in some areas. Okay, so here's some examples that I cut from LinkedIn. And I want you guys to let me know if you think this is a business analyst job, you put one in the, in the chat, or if it's not a business analyst job, you put zero in the chat. So for, for example, this one, it said, Monitor key metrics and provide weekly, quarterly, and annual performance reports. Work with cross-disciplinary team to drive revenue and profitability. Prepare month, quarter, and year-end close deliverables in a timely manner. Produce monthly and quarterly reports, forecasts, and payments for a variety of partners, et cetera, et cetera. So I know I'm giving it away because I put the labels there. But in my opinion, that's not, these are all jobs that are labeled business analysts. So is this a business analyst job or is this a reporting job? What do you guys think? Right? Do you think this is a business analyst job? I put one if you think it's business analyst, but zero if you think it's not business analyst, it's a reporting job. So that's kind of the thing that you're going to encounter as you're looking for jobs. There's another one. Um, perform sales and pricing analysis, evaluate key sales drivers and suggest modifications, build and update sales presentations, work independently conducting deep dive into their sales execution and pricing strategies. Is this a business analyst job? Or is this like a sales manager's job? What do you guys think? I can't see the result in the chat. I wish I could open it to see it. Um, We're getting no, not a BA job. Right, not a BA job, right? I have too many screens open, so you'd have to jump in and let me know what the result is, because I'm not seeing it, Olivia. This is not a BA job. Then look at this one. Lead annual planning process across multiple cost centers. Act as an advisor to various group managers, manage and compare actual to budget results in a periodic basis, uh, design and share reports with senior leadership, develop expenditures and revenue forecasts, prepare baseline budget and revisions as needed to account for changes in the business environment, work closely with finance, execute on annual planning process. This is a business, this is labeled a business analyst job in LinkedIn. To me, that's a finance job, right? This is not a business analyst job. So the employers are everywhere. They're all over the place, okay? So if you guys agree that this is a business analyst job, you can let me know again. Here's the final one. So five years experience working in support of product management. That seems very business analyst, like we work with product managers, that's, that's normal. Uh, design of new interactive Tableau dashboards and enhance an existing dashboard. Designing and creating data visualizations, reports and dashboards using MS Excel and PowerPoint, know-how of creating mathematical, statistical calculations, 
table calculations, hierarchies, and drill down visualizations in Tableau. Is that a data analyst job or is that a business analyst job? <laughs> right? So this is the example. I'm, this is just a small snippet of what I've encountered just looking at this, the, the whole arena, just looking at the landscape, that business analysis has become this mismatch of all kinds of stuff. And so as you enter the job market and you're a new business analyst, you could be very intimidated by these things because now you might think you need to run off and know Tableau and do statistical analysis. Then you got to go do site finance. You got to do reporting and you're just all over the place too, right? So I think as a community, we really have to do a better job of defining the functions of a business analyst and trying to help evangelize that with employers. They know what it is that, that we should be doing. And um, just as you're looking for a job to be conscious that this is happening. So you don't feel overwhelmed. You don't feel like you don't know anything. So that happens too. If you don't know any of these things, you're like, oh, I can't do this job. If you, if you know what a business analyst is supposed to do, you can know that, okay, these are, this is an error of the, the job poster. They, they labeled this wrong thing. And so <laughs> you just keep going, right? And don't, don't internalize it. Go ahead, somebody want to say something? Yeah, I actually do want to jump in with a quick question. I, I, I agree with, with your observations, and I've actually, for myself, uh, observed similar patterns over, over the years, not just recently. I mean, it seems to be very common. So I was always curious myself, is it because, is the trend because the companies don't really have a standard for what the business analysis job is supposed to do, and they just keep coming up with whatever and slapping the BA job on it, or, or because they don't understand what the BA want to do? Is it, is it the ignorance or is it the purpose? I think it's a lot of ignorance. It could be a little bit of purpose, but I think majority of it is ignorance. It's that, you know, they don't really know. We haven't done a good job of defining the role. It's a very, it's not an exact science. Business analysis is not <sighs> an exact science. So you can't just say this is exactly what business analysts are. We are very flexible. But at the same time, the, the, the companies might have a different impression of what they expect the business analyst to do without knowing about the actual role. And so there's a lot of ignorance around there, but it's really for us sometimes to help correct that and to help to define what we are supposed to be. Right. Um, I, mean, I mean, these, are, these yeah. are clearly analyst jobs, right? Yeah, they are. It's the business analyst part that throws it off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, these are definitely analysts. So the point is they, they hear business and they think, okay, th this is about the business. So it should be a business analyst, you know? So it's just, maybe it's just the naming of it that makes it confusing and too generic that anything can be thrown under that title. Okay, great question. Thank you for jumping in there. So, okay, let's talk about the skills. What are the skills that business um, employers are asking for based on what I saw in, the, in the, the data? So we know about the hard skills, you know, your requirements, solicitation, you know, your documentation, your process, all that stuff, that's great. And I have the list of top, the top list of um, hard skills and soft skills in the book, so you can get that there. But I wanted to call out the soft skills that we may not even know that it's been asked for that much. So this is somewhat surprising to me too, because I, I, I you know, I expect that organization skills, that analytical skills, all that stuff. But I was a little bit surprised about what I found here. So employers want multitasking. Okay, they want a business analyst that's going to be jumping around a different project. So they're working on this project and that project and they can they can navigate between different projects. They don't want someone who's going to be single focused and just working on one thing. And when that's done and something else, that's, you know, like waterfall. So they really want this multitasking skill set. And they mention it a lot in the job descriptions. So that's something you should know. Um, Self-motivation. So they want a business analyst who just knows what to do and just gets up and does it. Like you are self-driven. They don't want someone they have to go and tell, okay, do this process, fix this thing. This is what you need to work on. They want this kind of self-driven attitude where you're coming in, you're self-motivated, you know what you need to do, you just start doing it. And if you need to ask questions along the way, you do, but you're, you're, you're driving your own self and you're figuring out what you need to do on your own. Um, that's something they also value. Training and coaching. So because the BA is going to be the one instrumental in delivering the change or coming up with the change, they also want you to train about the change that you implemented. So they want you to become that, that SME, that source of knowledge. So before, and in most companies, they do have a trainer already, and they do have ways of you know, getting the information out to the rest of the organization, but they want the BA to kind of lead that role as well. So they want you to train and mentor uh, on the processes that you've done. And so I found that to be a consistent theme in the job descriptions I've read. 
relationship building, which is a very easy one to understand, right? So we're going to be talking to stakeholders. We're going to be having these conversations. They want to be a who can build and maintain good relationships. They want to make sure that um, you're keeping, if you have to talk to clients, you're keeping that relationship going. If you have to talk to stakeholders, you can easily navigate different stakeholders. And you don't have this, um, I don't know, standoffish personality or you're not doing things to, to, to break the relationships, right? So they, they find relationship building to be important as well, which is something that you don't find people putting on their resume a lot, but this is very important. So if you do uh, put it, it, it will be definitely beneficial for you. Formulating recommendations, this is another no-brainer. We're coming up with solutions anyway. We're the ones that are conceptualizing the solutions to the problems that we encounter. So just being able to come up with a recommendation, different recommendations, coming up with different ideas, even if it's not the one that they eventually pick, but just the fact that you are, the last thing they want to do is go in a room and everybody's like looking around. Nobody's suggesting anything. You want, even if it's bad suggestion, they want people to be jumping around thinking, thinking through things. And as business analysis naturally to us anyway. So this is really something that we all should be able to do pretty easily and also problem solving. So that's, that comes naturally to people who are business scientists as well. But these are the things that I've found um, that came out of the data about the skill, the soft skills that, you know, that they want. So this was to be the poll question. I'll still give you guys a little time to think through this. I know it might take a little while. Um, so between one and 10, I want you guys to rate yourself in the competencies of each of the skills below. So process improvement, documentation, UAT testing, data analytics and SQL writing, requirement solicitation, and modeling and wireframes. So if you were to rate yourself on these different BA hard skills between one and 10, what would you give yourself? What rate would you give yourself? So you can take a moment and do that. Um, might take a little while to think about it. I know you guys are so skillful. You don't know which, which one of them to give 10 to, right? <laughs> um, the other one that I wanted you to, to, to think about was of these six skills, which one of these do you think uh, is the most requested by employers? Put that answer in the chat. Which one of these do you think is the most requested by the employers? Is it Process improvement, is it documentation, UAT, modeling, requirements, solicitation, or analytics? You can put the number, the one you think is the top. So I'm not seeing the chat as, again. Okay, uh, I, I, I am looking, I'm looking. Um, it looks like uh, number four and five are coming up a lot. Um, some one, but mostly fours and fives. Okay, okay, that's cool. All right, so here you go. <laughs> the number one most requested skill by employers is requirement solicitation. Mm -hmm. So if you did that audit and to see you know, how you rank yourself, if you're not ranking requirement solicitation highly, then you need to work on that because this is the number one requested skill um, that employers are asking for. So I thought I'd share that with you guys. There's other, the other Skills are also listed in the book, so you can find out more about skills from the book as well. Now let's look at the career paths. I know we are, we have a lot to go, and uh, we have time issues. So, career paths. So, <clears throat> I wanted to bring this up to say that before I get into the career path, from what I have uncovered with the data, I wanted to talk a little bit about agile. So, we all know the agile manifesto. I think some of us like the back of our hands, right? individual and interactions over processes and tools, working software over comprehensive documentation, customer collaboration over contracts negotiation, responding to change over following a plan. So those are the guiding principles of uh, the Agile Manifesto, which came out in 2001. Now from the 2020 IIBA Global Salary Survey, we saw that 72% of the respondents were working Agile. 72%. So from 2001 to 2020, it's grown that much and it's continuing to grow. And of the Agile, Scrum, Agile Scrum is a methodology that's most used by business analysts and by companies in general. So what does that mean for business analysts? Well, we know the majority of business analyst jobs are in IT, right? And the majority of IT companies are going to Agile. And if they're going to Agile, they're using Scrum. But the challenge is that Scrum does not have a role 
for business analysts. Scrum has a role for product owners, right? But business analysts are working in agile. So we're working normally alongside the product owner, trying to help you know, flesh out those details from whatever the product owner has decided that we're gonna do in the sprint. We're writing those acceptance criteria. We're helping flesh out the, the, elicit the requirements to make sure we're getting all the information that we need to have. So we're doing a lot and we're working in agile, but from a methodology perspective, if somebody was to look at the book, it doesn't have a business analyst role. And so there is a push towards product ownership because if a company who doesn't know about business analysts necessarily and they are trying to follow Agile and they're being advised to have a product owner, then that's who they're gonna look for, right? And if you look at the LinkedIn um, emerging jobs, <clears throat> sorry, the emerging jobs report that came out from LinkedIn as product owner has been one of those emerging jobs that are coming up. Okay, so as I'm looking at the landscape and I'm looking at the path for business analysts, I'm seeing that it's growing in, there's, there's two things happening. One is becoming a little bit more data intensive with SQL queries and data analytics. And on the other side is also blending, you know, like there's product owner doing some of what business analysts are doing. So it's like an overlap, okay? And every company that's doing Agile is doing their own kind of Agile. So therefore, what kind of Agile is your Agile, right? Everybody's doing their own thing. So in some companies, they have the business analysts working alongside the product owner. And above the product owner is the project manager or the product manager, right? But in other companies, they don't even have a business analyst. They have the product owner doing the job of a business analyst, doing all the elicitation, writing all the user stories. And then they report to the product manager. In some cases, the product manager reports to the product owner because the product owner may be at the director level. In this book, I review the alternative careers for business analysts. And one of those careers include product owner as well as product manager, as well as um, some other careers. And oftentimes in, in LinkedIn, the product owner is listed as a director level job. So it's that in LinkedIn, you have entry level, you have uh, associate, mid senior level, director and executive. And sometimes the product owner is at the director level. So they're above. So it's, it's, it's a mixed match. <laughs> like it's very, it's, it's not consistent at all. But I do still see where because the product owner is doing a lot of the tasks that the business analyst is doing, it might make sense that you're applying for jobs to also look for product owner jobs because the skill set that you have as a business analyst can also be applied as a product owner. The problem is that Agile Scrum, for whatever reason, when they came up with their methodology, just didn't have a business analyst role. They called it product owner. And the product owner has the final say as to what gets into the sprint, which is a little bit more senior, a little bit. But at the same time, the analysis has to be done by somebody, right? So as you're looking for jobs, don't only search for business analyst jobs, because you could find uh, where the product owner is doing the same thing as the business analyst, and but it's the title is not a product owner, so you can search for those jobs as well. Um, sometimes it applies, sometimes it doesn't. So <laughs> just giving you the reality. This is what's going on in the world, guys. Um, so if, from my opinion, in terms of your career path, to me, it seems that if you're working as a business analyst or you're just going to start, you start as an entry level and you get, you know, get seasoned there, but then you need to move to a senior BA role. So you're trying to get up into the senior level of a business analyst job if your company offers that. Some companies call it level two, level three, whatever. So you're trying to become more senior and then you try to get ownership, right? So you try to be a product owner. From there, you could be a product manager, a project manager. Uh, I know some people who skip the product owner altogether, just go from BA to product or project. That's fine too. And above that, you're getting to being director, executive, and you can go as far as you want up the ladder from there. But this is what I think is the, the path that could take you further with your career um, based on what's going on in the job market right now. Um, there's some other things that are in the book that I haven't talked about today, like salaries, like um, you know how many jobs are being offered by recruiters versus directly from the company versus if it's a full-time job or a part-time job or you know temporary job, internships that are available, um, industry information, you know salary by industry. I also talk about skills and the trends and the tools that they're asking for. There's a lot more stuff in here that I haven't been able to talk about. Certifications, what certifications are the companies asking for? You'd be surprised about that one. So there's a lot more information in the book. So I encourage you to go get the book. Um, and you know, find out what the market is about. So 
get the book from here, get some more information. Again, subscribe to my channel, right? I need subscribers, y'all. I only have 4,000 or so. I need subscribers. So go check out my channel and subscribe, right? And you can get some additional resources at my website. You can connect with me on LinkedIn or you can send me a message via email, okay? So that's it, guys. That's what I have to share with you today. I hope this was helpful, right? Many, many thanks for having me here. It was a great pleasure to be invited by both the chapters to present this. I'm very honored to do that. And so if you guys have any questions from what I presented, now would be the great time to jump in and ask any questions and I will be able to take those and answer them for you. Well, thank you, Carolise. Uh, great presentation. Um, I have a question maybe to get us started off. Um, you uh, showed us the various job ads and how um, the BA title, if we just do a regular job search for business analysts, we might come up with anything. So, um, so what would you suggest? Would you suggest like you went through the job ads with us, just sort of going through it with a fine tooth comb and um, sort of eliminating those jobs that I guess, I guess what I'm trying to say is for the individual BA, whether you are just starting or, um, or you have a lot of experience, I guess what I'm just sort of wanting you to summarize is what should our personal approach be? Maybe knowing what our skill set is and then looking for our skill set, not necessarily the title when we're searching for jobs. Yeah, it depends on what your, your objective is. Um, so yeah, you definitely want to get a job where you can feel comfortable and you can know that you can do the task you're asking for. Um, so I would say don't trust the title alone. So you might be scanning through and just saying, okay, this is not, I can't do this, I can't do this. Or yeah, I can do this one and you open and you apply. Um, you'd sometimes have to have to read it and make sure the job description itself is aligning to what you're looking for. Otherwise, you could just be blanketing everybody and you might not have the success i always encourage people to um one first of all you got to tweak your resume right you got to make sure you have a very updated resume you make sure you have your linkedin profile right you have your skills set out your, rec your recommendations and all that stuff and then when you go looking for jobs yes you can apply just like that because sometimes we just want to apply right we just want to get get applications out there and hope something catches Right. But if you find those jobs that has the job descriptions that are so he's like, I can do all of this stuff. This is really a good job that I can do. Then you want to be more targeted at that, about that approach, right? So you want to tweak your resume for that particular job and try to get the best um, result, hopefully, right? So you, you, you don't have to read every single one of them, but you have to make sure that you're not applying for something that uh, is, you know, it's not really a business analyst job because there, that will not suit what you're trying to do and you might just get frustrated that way. So you have to read the, the job description um, and don't just look for business analysts alone. Sometimes you have to, in LinkedIn, there's a filter section. So you, when you put business analysts, you can go down and it says um, function or title, and then you click on that and that will narrow the search as well to make sure it's actually a business analyst job and that it's not just the word business analyst spread somewhere in the, in the job description. Okay. Also, like I said, look for product owner jobs as well because they're doing some of the similar things. And so mm -hmm. you might find that if you're into technical business analysis, they're, they're more specific with the product owner. It's, okay. it's a bit more defined. So okay. you could look into that field as well. Maybe. Okay, all right. Uh, we have a question from Elizabeth uh, in the chat. She says, what, do you, uh, what advice do you have for some of us who have transferable skills in business analysis and also completed training in business analysis, how do we go about uh, searching for a job as a newbie? So she's saying, you know, looking at her transferable skills, um, she obviously understands herself what the BA role is. She's identified what skills she has that are transferable. Uh, she's done some training, but uh, she's wondering about job searching as a newbie. Yeah, it's definitely very intimidating as a newbie getting out there when there's so much confusion as to what the business analyst role is from how job posters are posting jobs. But definitely, if you're starting a new job, you could look for, um, I would say, entry-level business analyst job because there's a filter for that on LinkedIn, if you're using LinkedIn. Um, or you could just say business analyst um, or entry-level business analyst. So those are probably the way you can narrow it down to just jobs that you know you can get because you're, you don't have the experience, right? And so you might find yourself just hitting a wall trying to get the job. When you go to the interview, the, the experience, you know, pushes you at the bottom of, 
least. Also, I would say just for in general looking for a job, I would say that the first person reading your resume is not usually a human. It's normally an application tracking system. So they're looking for these keywords, right, to match the job application. So if you know business analysis um, skill sets, right, so you can look for those keywords and you try to pepper them within your, within your, you know, your, your resume so you can be picked up by the application tracking system and can be recommended for a job. That's one, one, one thing that you can do. Um, also, just looking for jobs in general is a little intimidating, I know that, but just have patience, right? You, you will definitely get a job. It's not gonna happen overnight. It typically takes six months to get a new job. So I know you're anxious, you wanna get in there, wanna get your feet ready, you've done all this training, you know all this stuff, it's all in your head, you wanna apply it somewhere, but you know, <laughs> just have some patience, it's gonna happen for you. In the meantime, find some case studies that you can do because you don't have any work experience. So if you could have a work sample that you've done this case study, you've applied your business analysis skills, you've written a, a BRD document or you've done some use cases, then you can say, okay, I haven't worked in the field, but I've been so interested in business analysis that I have done these case studies from this real world example. And this is how, this is an example of the kinds of documents I can produce. Then that might go a little way in an interview with you eventually get to one and keeps you abreast, keeps you applying what you know. So as you're waiting to get a job, you're not just sitting there, you know, being anxious. You're actually applying your stuff and, and making sure you're sharpening your skills as a business analyst. Excellent. That's that's very good advice. Very good advice. Um, I'd just like to chime in, Vincent, uh, in the chat. We've got a, some activity here. Uh, Vincent Clark uh, said that um, maybe as a newbie, uh, you could identify your industry, uh, either the industry you're in or the one you desire to be in, and become a SME, a subject matter expert in that industry, um, because it's it's easy to, to teach certain, uh, I guess what he's communicating, I'm just sort of summarizing here, is that by becoming an expert in that industry, they can train you in the other stuff that they want you to do. Right, yeah, that would definitely show a lot of promise if you're, you know, you're learning so much, you become a scene just in that one area, that would be great. Right, right. And so Patricia also says that she wants to stay with her current company and uh, use her transferable skills to get into a BA role. So she's not a BA, but she's, she's in a company that obviously employs BAs. So what would you say about that? That's always good if you're already in the company to try to make that transition. I would say that you look for opportunities where you can help right? Look for, if you go to that department and you say, hey, I know you guys are working on some projects. I'm willing to put in some extra time to help you guys wherever you see it fit. Maybe they could find a, a, you know, a side project you could work on. Maybe you could get experience that way. And also just sit with the, the BAs, like just pick their brain, talk to them and find out what are they doing and how, you know, learn from them because they're already there in the same company. You can make a good relationship with them. And then when an opportunity opens up, who do you think they're going to look for? You, because you've already been showing this interest and you're learning how to do things and you're taking on extra extra projects, um, sometimes it's going to be rough because you, you might have to do your regular work and then go do help with another work because that's just what you have to do. But if you're willing to put that sacrifice, I would say get close to that BA department, find out where what projects they're working on and see if there's anywhere you could help with whatever they're working on. They always People always need help. So if they're willing to give you something to work on, that way you can get familiar with it. That would be a great, a great um, thing to do. Excellent advice. Excellent advice. Um, we had someone who is international um, looking to, um, I think they're in London, looking t at roles in the U.S. Um, maybe international job search, I'm, I'm guessing here. But, um, but I, would, I would probably su suggest, and, and you can suggest, Carolise, um, with respect to searching, what would, you, what would you say when you're trying to do that big of a jump? Oh, this is a person trying to move into the U.S. and start looking for a job in the U.S.? Uh, so they're a BA internationally. So they're in London and they want to come to America. Yes. So part of the job um, search, if you do get called for an interview or even at the very beginning, the recruiter is going to ask for your ability to work in the U.S. So you have to make sure you have that ability first before you start searching because that's going to become a barrier if you don't have it. And so you're going to go through the process and then get uh, discouraged at the end. So once you have the ability to work in the U.S., then, yeah, you can just go on uh, LinkedIn and try to find out the jobs. Now, if you're, if you're not sure where you're going to work, then you look for remote jobs. 
right? But if you have identified which state you want to work in and you try to look for jobs in that state, mm -hmm. don't be North Dakota and don't be, uh, <laughs> don't be yeah. Wyoming. It's a very little limited jobs in those states. So, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Another quick question here. Uh, Kevin was asking, he was sharing that he's been doing some courses on uh, Udacity, some BA courses on Udacity, and we know that he's a newbie and he's wondering, is he wasting time during the course, doing the courses? I guess you've answered that to a certain extent about trying to get real world experience and maybe taking those courses that he's done and actually uh, using those skills on a case study like you suggested before. Oh yeah, but uh, if you're doing a course on Udacity, that's not a waste of time if you're getting value from it because you want to be exposed. If you're not working in the field, you want to be exposed to business analysis as much as you can. And taking a course is a great indication that mm -hmm. you're committed to the field, that you want to learn about it. So that's something you could even put on your resume to say, you know, these are the courses I've been doing in this field, even though I've never worked in it yet, but that's how I'm interested. I'm doing these courses. I'm, you know, I'm a part of these organizations at the IIBA. That's something you can mention on your resume. And that just shows your commitment. It shows that you're, you're putting time and you're putting effort and you really want to get into this field. So the employer is going to look at that very favorably. So I don't think you're wasting your time at all. <laughs> right, right. And lastly, I know we're running out of time, but I'm going to uh, let Vincent's question be or statement be the last one. Uh, Vincent said, consider also the knowledge areas of the BABOC uh, if there are activities you're light in, uh, meaning your knowledge area is a little weak, seek opportunities either at your current job or maybe you can do some volunteer work. Um, and it goes on, he goes on to say things like you were suggesting, hey, if I can help within a department at my current job, uh, be willing to go the extra mile and do some things before or after work um, to, um, to strengthen your knowledge in those areas. So BABOC and um, volunteering um, to uh, help uh, to get the knowledge that you need. Definitely, for sure. Okay. All right. Well, very good. Well, thank you so much, Carolise. We really appreciate it. And um, I will uh, still have to get the, uh, the wheel of names here because the book that she was referencing, we're going to give away that book. Um, I'm going to let you answer one more question while I get this wheel of names going. Um, a last one here. Uh, how, how would someone deal with information overload then as a newbie? Uh, coupled with the pandemic, it seems hard. Uh, doing job shadowing um, might be uh, a possibility, he says. Um, what are your thoughts on that? It really depends on how you learn. If you're more a visual person or, or you're more hands-on person, then job shadowing might be the best way for you to learn. Or maybe if you, you know, if you prefer to read about things and just do your own self-study, that's another way to learn. You're definitely going to have information overload because business analysis is not an exact science, right? It applies in different situations, different problems. I would say take it in small, you know, small chunks, right? Take a use case or take a problem that you're trying to solve and focus on that and get, the, get all the documentation written for that. Um, understand that domain very well, and then you can move on to something else. So let's say, for example, you're understanding user journey maps. Then you take an example with a user, you walk through the journey maps, you understand their flow, you do the, your flow charts and your journey maps, and then, you, okay, I understand that area of business analysis, and then you can move on to something else, right? If you're trying to learn a lot of different, different things, then you're definitely going to feel, um, yeah, the overload, because there's so many different things to learn. I'd say just take it one step at a time, pace yourself, and figure out what's the best way for you to learn so you don't feel overwhelmed. Great answer. Great answer. Well, thank you again, Carol Lise. I'm going to um, let uh, Steve or Hillary make a few closing remarks um, because uh, my chapter president had to drop off uh, oh, due okay. to some personal things. So um, Steve or Hillary. Yeah, I was going to say that, um, you know, like so many chapters, we have a mix of experienced people, but we have a lot of people who are trying to break in. And uh, absolutely, in Atlanta, we try to run basically internal projects where people can work with experienced BAs on a real piece of work. <laughs> um, and, you know, first of all, you do learn, you're learning from somebody. I think, I think in an interview, you can use that experience. You know, um, I worked on this kind of project. It doesn't matter who it's for. It really doesn't, if you think about it. it it's applying that critical thinking 
and, and those analysis skills. And so um, we find that is something we do offer our members is opportunities to do those kind of things. So, um, so that's another, another way to get some of that experience before you get a, maybe before you get a paying job. Definitely. Great point. Yeah, absolutely. It is a good point. Thank you, Steve. I want to okay. think a lot of you before you go that this presentation I made today, I will have it posted on my website, paralyst.com. So you can go there and you know walk through this. Um, and this is also being recorded, right, Olivia? So we could share this after as well. And I will put this. It is. Yeah. So it would be uh, it is. Absolutely, it is. And I just want to thank Carolise again uh, for sponsoring our meeting and for speaking tonight and for sharing the book with us. So without further ado, I've got everyone's name here. Must be present to win. So <laughs> uh, going to spin and see what we come up with. OK. Have a winner. Yay. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> How about that? Wow. So one of our Atlanta chapter people won. Congratulations. Congratulations. Well, I know exactly where to find you. So uh, <laughs> no, no problems here. We will, uh, we will definitely get your prize to you. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm sure you'll not only like the book, but the templates and all the things that come in the, the package, right? So she, won't, she won't get the physical book. She'll get the, the uh, PDF version as well as the resource kit that comes with it. So there's just much more okay. that you'll get. Okay. Yeah. All right. Very good. Well, congratulations. Yay. Yay. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, just want to thank the Atlanta chapter again on behalf of the Palmetto chapter for uh, coming together with us and hosting Carolise. And Carolise, you shared some really good information, gave us some food for thought. All of our new BAs, yay. We're cheering you on. So uh, you've got lots of resources here and you know we're not going in anywhere. You can find us on the internet, come back to another meeting. Uh, like I mentioned, I've got a certification chat on Friday with the Palmetto chapter. Feel free to join us and ask some more questions, okay? All right, we wish you all the best. All right. Everyone, Listen, everybody. stay you. safe, everyone. Thank you so much. You everybody have a great night. Take care.